about hydrology, one problem we have is to establish uh, what watershed are. Uh, in the past, meaning before the 90s of the last century, when we were born more or less, uh, we take maps and uh, we decide uh, what, what the watershed were on the maps. Uh, from the 90s, however, a new tool came in, uh, which covered my entire life in research, actually. So when I came in, we were still working with maps, and I see the whole, the whole thing going. From then, uh, uh, digital elevation models were produced. And uh, today, doing watershed delineation is working with EEMs. Uh, I am citing here a history by uh, Luis Borges, which uh, is the uh, exactitude of science is called, in the sense that uh, there was this guy that built a map la as large as the, the country at the end to, uh, to, co uh, to, be the, to do the very much more precise map of the world. And at the end it was a new support. Okay. So what I am doing here, the very first, is introducing uh, uh, what we need to do. Uh, <coughs> we have the landscape, the true landscape. Actually, that is a, a, a reconstructed landscape. You are used to see those type of things now because you see on, on very much any product that, is a, that you have even in your in your. Uh, uh, home, you have a, a landscape, and from a landscape you have produce, to produce something which is digital, conserved in the computer, recorded in the computer. So initially you have a grid size where you put the, uh, some numbers that are the elevations, space regularly, or you have, for instance, an irregular, a triangulated irregular network of data where you have point. Now you know that different tools like uh, LiDAR, which is laser detection. Uh, now people use maps produced by LiDAR, e e either transported by uh, UAV, a main, um, a main vehicle that flights, or uh, produced by airplane or uh, helicopters, but and we have a, 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 a very precise knowledge of the Earth surface all over all the Earth, or from satellites. And more or less, now we can know the, the, the all the Earth surface and with the precision of centimeters uh, on a grid size of less than. 10 meters. Uh, the, this is not what is usually available to scientists for free. Uh, usually what we have available, available is the SRTM data sets, which is 30 meters by 90 meters, or 90 meters by 90 meters, or 30 meters by 30 meters. But anyway, we have those data sets. Laser in the origin are in a very regular, that is all uh, literature for treating those laser data before reproducing anyway a grid like this. And we will work with a grid like this. At that point, we have a discrete representation of surface. Uh, in the tradition, in, in the whole tradition of maps, but also in computer, actually, we can reconstruct the surface from the data that we have, uh, producing uh, surfaces, continuous surfaces. This means that we interpolate uh, the, the original data with splines, <coughs> for instance, there are several methods. Also there, a bunch of literature on the topic. And usually the what we produce there is a form like this, where we have contour lines, uh, same to what, and flow lines orthogonal to the, to the, uh, to the, to the quotes. A grid is a, 
usually a matrix for us, which is uh, at each point of the matrix has a size, usually is on square, let's say one meter by one meter, 30 meters by 50 meters. And uh, uh, in each one, in origin, represent a, <coughs> represent a quote. As you see there, uh, the quotes there are uh, integer numbers. This is not anymore. It was integer number because the, those quotes were, uh, were uh, originally derived from maps, and the maps were uh, much less resolved than the data that we have now. But this is a, quite an historical uh, picture because it's from David, David Terbottom, who is one of the pioneers of this use of uh, uh, EMs in in hydrology. And uh, obviously, uh, for us, it's a matrix. <coughs> we take it as it is a matrix, but it is not exactly a matrix. It's a representation of a curved surface on a plane. So we have projection, we have a datum. There should be some topographical other information that we are uh, here almost forgetting, actually. But that are the common um, information that you have from uh, topography. There are some uh, things that you can take out from uh, the, the, the DM, the surfaces, primarily three things. The altitude, the gradients, and the curvature. This is a, a good re a reference for knowing what, what, what each one of these it is. For, for instance, when we talk about altitude, quote, elevations, uh, all synonyms of what, what I am trying to explain, we have things like that. Also, this is an historical thing because it's a, the first basin catchment that we did in 3D almost 20 five years ago or so, something more maybe. And uh, here the quote Z, Z is a, a quote as a function of the horizontal X and Y. Just as F is the elevation, a function of X and Y. Here actually you see signs, some more features like a river network superimposed and that other uh, geomorphological features which are actually, actually is a conoids in alluvial farm coming out from from this river. And one of the scope of this part of the of the school is how to extract the river network and how to extract the the ba the boundaries of the network. We <coughs> uh, have yeah, different representation obviously and we learn also how to represent this is a quite trivial for many of you uh, to represent these things, but it's not trivial at all, actually. You are, you, here you have quotes with, with a legend, and we have a basis here. Here you have the higher quotes, and inside you have the, the river network again. Usually, when you do this kind of thing, you work with the GIS, the Geographic Information System. Uh, learning a how to use a geographic information system for a hydrologist is uh, absolutely important. For an environmental scientist, is necessary. You cannot do without. Because it, but the, you know, uh, in the concept of uh, 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 GIS, <coughs> there are many things. One is the representation of the surface, which is, for instance, you see here with contour lines. And you, you see before just with colors, and uh, how to make this color and this contour lines is a is a is an aspect. And the other is how to, the data that stay behind this, and the other is how to allow, uh, to work with the, those data. For instance, when uh, one, another representation of uh, of the elevation is the distribution of elevations. Distribution of elevations, which uh, here is the number of the quotes at the certain uh, elevation. You see here the Meledrio catchment, which is uh, the one we use as a standard in, in, this, uh, in this school. 
and we do some elaborations, you see it's a pretty high cost, not maybe for Andes, not for Tibet. <laughs> Let's say the, the maximum cost is uh, beyond 3,500 meters. And the average for or less is 2,000. And so, but actually, you, if you look at the, at the, at the right side, you see a, a little statistics of those data. And you see that there is a the number of points, the mean is 2,049 meters. The standard deviation is 600. That's a mean, which is a, a, a stochastical process that generates elevation by usually. But, and uh, all at the maximum is 3,754 uh, <coughs> uh, uh, meters. You, you can also, if you look uh, more carefully, maybe you can also see some more uh, features, but we maybe we talk of it again later. So, which is the highest point on the It's on the Brenta, Brenta, on the Brenta system. Eh? The Brenta is, is three, is the less than, than, than I don't than know the exactly. Is the less the best sound on that area? Okay, that is the data. Oh, okay. Data is the data. Data Yes, yes. And uh, this also from the same from the same data before we built the cumulant the the cumulant of the this that was the distribution. This is the integral of, of the distributions, which is pretty much more regular. It looks like very regular in part here. And uh, uh, however, this is not the way uh, we are going to see uh, this kind of things in uh, usually in the historic at least papers of, of uh, uh, regarding geomorphology because uh, usually the axes are reversed. Because to build what is called ipso an isometric course, then we see then we see how to reverse the axis. Actually, I didn't do. Giovanna did. Ah, this is a, a picture that some, someone remember maybe. And uh, uh, when we talk about DMs, actually. Uh, we don't. Uh, we don't. We are not talking about DEMs that works with hydrology because we have uh, uh, pit. We have uh, whole. Uh, we have whole depressions. And uh, if we so, uh, the first idea of an hydrologist is I start from a point. I, I follow the steepest descent, and I go to the sea actually. But sometimes uh, following the steepest descent, but in some points. That is a hole, you stay there. Uh, to recognize uh, uh, features like the river networks, for instance, you have to fill these holes. Uh, uh, are true these holes or are false these holes? I would say that the, at the beginning of the story, uh, when we have very rough, uh, very rough DEMs, uh, uh, the, most of the pits were uh, an artifact of the discretization of the terrain. Now that you have much more precise, uh, much more precise maps, uh, the pits are, can be real terrain effects. We have seen holes also in the, but we feel them in any case. This is a map of, of another, uh, another uh, river, I don't know if this is Mazia catchment. Which one? Sadu is the name of the river. Okay. In German, I think. Okay. And uh, and the red points are points with depressions. That that we feel. It. So the first operation we have to do when we have a DEM from the hydrological point of view is to get rid of those things and filling the flooding the the pits and uh, filling them. Obviously, there is some mathematics. <coughs> okay. G 
given the surface, uh, we say the derivative of the surface is in the gradient. But the gradient actually, how we calculate the gradient? The gradient is the derivative along the axis. Uh, it is given by two components. The derivative is along the axis of, axis of the elevations. And it is actually a vector. <coughs> and when we think uh, to the gradients, maybe we think to the slope. So we are thinking to the intensity of that step vector, uh, vector, the norm of that vector. And uh, in fact, we are thinking to what we can call slope. Actually, in the program we will be using later, slope is a, still a different thing. And it's so is the arctange of that thing. We can give it as an angle, or we can give as a uh, a number between 0 and 1, no, 0 and infinity. But we are, uh, because we have a vector, we have a vector, actually the gradient uh, is uh, from bottom to top, like this one. You have an intensity, the length of this vector, and the orientation of this vector. Mm -hmm. The orientation of this, this vector is made by two angles. One angle is uh, the vertical one, the one between my two pieces of my uh, right arms, and the other is the orientation. If I, s uh, this orient if I put like this, my orientation is toward the east, for instance. Okay, and maybe I start to. So we have also this angle <coughs> to measure. Also, of the statistics, we can do an angle. Uh, we can do of the gradients. We can do the statistics, and we we can see things like that. And for instance, we start to see some uh, interesting things if you look, because we see, for instance, that we have uh, a bunch of points with uh, with zero slope, with zero gradient meaning that, for instance, there in that basin there is some flat, but usually flat. Uh, mm, here in the mountain there is no <coughs> flat, uh, such a thing like being flat. So if <coughs> it is a surface of a lake, or also some artificial things <coughs> like an artifact. Uh, we see also the distribution here as a, sign, a spike over there oh, for uh, uh, for high slopes, and this is also an artifact actually, because I blocked the distribution, uh, I, I cut away the distribution higher than a certain amount, because otherwise I couldn't, the distribution was too, 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 uh, too narrow. Uh, actually, we could also do, have done a statistic also on aspects, and that I didn't do here, or and uh, here you have, or we have, we could have the angles here measured, like uh, 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 like angles. The slope me measure like slope angle, not just slope. And we can do. It. So, how it is a map of of gradients, a map of the slope. What I called before a slope is a map like this. To a geomorphologist, this says a lot of things. For instance, here you have zero, zero slope, according to the legend there. And so you have something strange here. And uh, you have higher slopes close to the river. Uh, from the geomorphology point of view, he is a geomorphologist. This is more or less. <laughs> this is important because of what does it mean? It means that uh, the river excavates the landscape close to the network. From the sediment, uh, from the geomorphological point of view, it means that it doesn't have enough, usually enough sediment 
and uh, so is uh, mostly uh, water not bringing sediment below the the capacity the uh, capacity of the river. So there is eroding during ages, and so it is uh, excavating a canyon or so. Flat points need a uh, survey of supplemental information. In fact, the river is this one that you see over there. Uh, in this moment, I don't remember, it's Flanginek River in Valrendena. And the flat that you see is a part of this uh, quarry. That uh, is this going to be also uh, remodeled sometimes. Ah, are those features common? No, if we uh, look at the different geomorphology, the other thing is different. Here, for instance, we have a, a torrente canali, the torrent canali here. Now I will show you a picture of where it is. And you, you see there that the, the slopes are uh, out of the, of the river network, are not close to the river network. Ma maximum slopes is where we have the maximum elevations. In fact, we are in the Dolomite. We have uh, cana a torrent canal is here in the Dolomite, and this is a typical Dolomite thing. Those peaks are those that we signed before. Third in indicator of topography is curvature. What, cur what is a curve? A cur a cur a curve. Ah, no, we don't know anything, but we say that uh, a line is not curved. A line is straight. So, a segment like this <coughs> is zero curvature. Okay, there are effects that I didn't, I didn't uh, see before, but uh, the two figures that we have, one on the vertical and one on the horizontal plane, <laughs> hypothetically, are curved. <coughs> uh, are curved. We have negative curvature here if the vertical is over there, and positive curvature here, and the zero more or less curvature here. So curvature are a characteristic of curves. Then we can generalize and have also curvature that refer to surfaces of upper hypersurfaces. But essentially we uh, trace curvature as a characteristic of the lines. And the curvature as a simple uh, geometrical explanation, if we take a curve, we trace the obsculating side, the circle, tangent to that point. Say so we take the curve, we write, we draw the circle which is tangent to that curve in that point, and we trace the radius of the obsculating circle. The inverse of the radius is the curvature. Very nice. You can interpret it also in another way. If you look at the curve, you take the, the tangent vector to the curve in a point, then you move, and your tangent vector change direction, and the curvature is the angle, the, the vector between the two, the two vectors. The curvature is this difference here. <laughs> You can see all the things in three dimensions. Yeah, it's not an easy figures to figure out this one. <laughs> yeah, you, I, I take just for a few seconds to, to it, but uh, if you want to, to understand better, you have to understand what is going on here. You have a curvature in 3D there. You have a piece of that, of the uh, uh, left side uh, curve uh, re reproposed. We pass through a point P. We have the tangent t to the curve. We have a normal. This is the tangent to the curve. Q 
you have the normal to the curve, and we have a third normal right here, which is the B normal. So it will be <laughs> like this. <laughs> and uh, we, we take uh, uh, those axes means to, to, to understand how the curvature works. But when, when we come to, uh, to landscape, we have surfaces like these ones. And I obvi obviously borrow the figures from the site that you see on, on the figure. So uh, the idea is that uh, you take a, the curve, you take some specific line on, on the surface, which is uh, the planar, uh, the, the contour lines, for instance, draw here. Over the contour lines, you take the curvature. So you have what we call planar curvature. The curvatures of the contour line is a property that changes point by point. And uh, this is the mathematical form where fx my, uh, my, uh, uh, means the, deri the derivative of f over x. So you see there that compare uh, appears uh, the double derivative of f uh, and the uh, uh, the, the square of the first derivative of, of f and uh, we have two normalizing factors here one which is uh, p which is uh, the square of the slope and q which is the uh, something similar because there is also into account the, the plus one we d you don't have to re re remember what is the planar curvature which is the formula of the planar curvature right now you have to understand the way of the concept. Here you see, we go along the lines, we take the curvatures, and there are points which have a, a positive curvature here, and points that have a negative curvature around here. It's clear that uh, negative and positive curvature have a clear geomorphological meaning, because uh, you have the river in the negative curvature. You never has a river network in uh, yeah, yeah, the river network in the negative curvature where there is concave landscape. Never in the positive. Positive curvature are uh, uh, the indication that you are probably in a hill slope or something that only in a nose, in a divide. Yeah, you can distinguish between beach and valleys. But you can take a completely different line. Instead of taking, uh, uh, is taking the, a line that goes along the contour lines, you can go orthogonally to the contour lines. Contour lines are more or less like this one. You go orthogonal to the to the contour lines. It is what we call the flow lines because if gravity is moving water, water is uh, moving <coughs> along the, the, the gradients direction, not the versus would be the other one. Along the gradient direction, more or less at less, or, uh, unless you have a, um, yeah, you have inertial also effects. If you put a, a small ball running here and then the, the curvature or the slope change, uh, yeah, the, the ball tends to go not along the, exactly along the, the, the steepest ascent, but have an inertia and goes a little bit over and then bends. So, but we are forgotten that part. So we have a diff uh, this, this kind of line, and here you have a, a different type of uh, landscape, which is uh, the curvature, uh, negative curvature, uh, curvature is convex, and positive curvature is concave. So again, you, you, you know that you don't see a river here. You see a river here, maybe. 
and combining the two experiments, <coughs> we that, okay, <coughs> over there you have the, the equations, so we have the equation for that. Uh, you, you, if you have to uh, uh, find out yourself, well, the, those equations, maybe you have difficulties, but we, someone uh, uh, find for us, found for us, and so we just use it. Uh, in this case, uh, you know, curvature has to do also with the geomorphological processes, how uh, sediment transport or things like that. It, 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 this is actually important. There is also a third curvature, actually, which is the we call tangential curvature. So you look at the figure here. You have a saddle here, which is a, uh, which is a figure interesting from people doing geometrics. We know this thing uh, actually from the second part of the 19th century, from Gauss' work. So the, the tangent plane is a plane that is along the contour lines. Okay? To the tangent plane, we have two <coughs> orthogonal planes. One is in the, in the direction of the uh, yeah, one is in the direction of the normal vector, which is, we say, in this one. And one is in, in the direction, OK, normal to the surface here is in the left direction. And the other is, you see, this is the gradient. We have the plane along the gradient, and we have the plane orthogonal to the gradient, which is this one. So the curvature, we have a curvature along this <coughs> line, a curvature along <coughs> this line, and a curvature along these lines that comes each one from the intersection between the planes and the surface. The tangential <coughs> curvature is right here. The, um, the profile curvature is right here. And the, uh, sorry, the planar curvature is right here, and uh, the uh, profile curvature is right here. <coughs> so we have three curvatures. And another way to see the thing is uh, maybe you, you can visualize mo more here. Uh, you have the contour lines, so the, cur the curvature of these contour lines is the planar curvature. Uh, the flow line and the, the curvature along those lines is the, the profile curvature. So these are values of the curvature. Usually, the curvature are really small in the landscape. Small numbers, meaning, okay, what is small or not small is not is relative, but the uh, you, here you expect to have uh, uh, values less than one, much less than one, actually. So uh, the, the landscape overall is not very curved. We have, oh, this is in Italian. I didn't, I forgot the, to change the things. However, what is written is if we have a positive value of the uh, profile curvature in red. Uh, this is a corresponding to the hydrograph network, uh, to the network, river network. And it is in the val in valleys. And uh, uh, in the <coughs> same, uh, the same uh, uh, under the same type of interpretation, uh, in the point of the river networks, uh, the topography tends to be convergent. So we have various elements to uh, try to classify the, the, the surface using just three elements, gradient, uh, uh, no, not just the three elements, but just the curvatures. Here we have the curvature along the contour line and the curvature along the flow line, we call this profile curvature and we call the other one um, planar curvature and we see that we have different 
geomorphological curves. And this is particularly easy to, to estimate because uh, each one of these classes can be classified in a basin. This is the Rio Santa Colomba, close to here. The yellow line is Curvature Zero, which is a lake of Santa Colomba. Nice place. Don't go to eat there because the restaurant is not more open there. <laughs> has happened to me to go. And uh, you see here, you have a, a quite patchy, anyway, uh, variation of these uh, forms. And so more or less, this is all we know about the very simple, very simple uh, uh, geomorphological um, characters that you can uh, uh, derived from differential geometry. 